I heard that you actually met this morning with a group of Haitian community leaders. Yes, so, um, activists, yeah. business How leaders. Did it go? Uh, very well. Um, activists, business leaders, um, a mm -hmm. lot of good conversations. You know, we try to meet the demands of the entire city, but mm -hmm. we are clear that even with those demands of public safety, housing, uh, education, uh, employment, we know that communities have specific demands that's unique to their community. And so we've been having a series yeah. of these round tables. First thing we had to do was get in office and stabilize this place. And now we can dig down after really turning around the economy, turning around public safety, getting education on track, uh, mm -hmm. you know, getting jobs in the city. We can now dig down into communities and say, hey, now the ship is somewhat stable. What can we do? And today was the meeting with our Haitian leaders. I love that because that's exactly, you know, why the Haitian Times is focused on what has the get it done mayor, right? New York City, <laughs> get stuff done mayor. Um, what are some things that you've either done recently specifically for the Haitian community or that's on your list of to-dos um, either from today after this meeting with community leaders or just in the recent in recent weeks, um, especially in light of the asylum seeker crisis that the city has been dealing with now for two years. Can you speak a little bit about that, some specifics for the Haitian community and Haitian asylum seekers in particular? Well, uh, uh, first, you know, as I stated with the general things we've done for the city, uh, it is not as though the Haitian community is, are not, in, uh, they, they are not in, uh, concerned about those items. I hear from my right. Haitian uh, rep brothers and sisters all the time, housing is a major issue. So the ability that we build more affordable housing in one year than any other administration in history uh, is something mm -hmm. to reflect on. Uh, the voucher program, a lot of low uh, wage, low income Haitian uh, New Yorkers uh, wanted to have access to FEPS vouchers. We gave, we have issued and have allowed people to use more FEPS vouchers than the history of the FEPS voucher program. And then those who are Haitian, uh, origin that are in the homeless shelters. You know, oftentimes, you know, I can just walk here in and someone would yell at me, you know, sa passe. I say, okay, that's one of my Haitian brothers and sisters. We transition more people in homeless shelters into permanent housing in the history of the city in one year. And so mm -hmm. those issues that I talk about are Haitian issues as well. But when you specifically drill down on uh, the Haitian uh, the Haitian community. It is important, number one, I'm going to come with some of my ideas from interacting with the community, but number two, the list should come from the community. I don't think nothing or anything is more insulting than people coming to a community and dictating, this is what I'm giving you. Then you spend the next few years and people say, that's not what we wanted and that's not what we asked for. That is why I brought folks in the room and say, mm -hmm. Come up with the list. Tell me what you need. What you need. Number one. Number one thing they came up with is the issues around Haiti. Yeah. Um, I, I am blown away at the absence of voices on Haiti. Don't mm -hmm. tell me about marching in the streets for things that are happening across the globe. When right here in our hemisphere, we should be all mobilizing for Haiti. Mm -hmm. You can't give billions with a B to conflicts across the globe, yet we can't find any money to help stabilize Haiti, something is wrong with that. And so I joined Haitian leaders, I joined Reverend Al Sharpton, and we stood in the rotunda of City Hall where we came together and stated that the federal government must play a role in assisting the stabilization of Haiti. They're in our region, they're in our neighborhood, and we should be looking after um, number one, our country first. Number two, folks who live in our neighborhood. And then we go to other parts of the globe. A, a second, what was mentioned today that was crucial for uh, our, my Haitian brothers and sisters was the importance of language access. Mm -hmm. That far too many 
of people who are here, not only from Haiti, but from South and Central America, but specifically Haiti, um, they need language transition services. And I walked away from that, that we're gonna, we're gonna coalesce with the groups who are already providing the services, and we're gonna put as many group together to come up with a, a, a mobile plan, or I should say a, 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 a tele-learning plan, mm -hmm. um, a cyber learning plan, where people could, we're gonna open schools in areas that are heavy um, migrants and new migrants and new arrivals. We're gonna open those schools. We're gonna allow teachers to use uh, video conferences to start teaching uh, English uh, as a second language right here. So it, we just we just heard that from the Haitian leaders. We I told my team we're gonna start implementing that right away. And we're gonna identify the schools, we're gonna identify the location, allow people to come in, get free material, free mm -hmm. access to an instructor, because uh, there's no reason right now in colleges, a lot of college, a lot of classes are, are done mobily. So there's no reason that we right. can't do the same for English access. But we're gonna reach out to the community and say, although the instructor, the instructor could be mobile, we want mm -hmm. the community to come in and volunteer to walk around and give people that hands-on assistant while the instructor is doing their thing uh, mobily. Uh, okay. So, sorry, just so I'm clear, th these are classes for adult learners, not for um, school-age children of migrants coming in, right? Yes. These are for adult learners. Yes. And so they'll be placed in the community somewhere, and their instructor will um, run the classes virtually, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And folks in the community can also come in to assist. Okay, right, I understand. Right, right. Because right. we mm -hmm. we already have uh, language language access, language transition. We're finding mm -hmm. students, students, young students who come in, which I always find amazing with the development of the human mind. But you mm -hmm. have you have young Haitian students that come in not understanding English, not knowing Creole and French, and within a year they're accelerating to being, you know, accelerated learners. They, 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 they're speaking English better than I speak English. <laughs> so in the school, we have already have the resources. We now have to give those resources to folks who are trying to find employment, but mm -hmm. don't have the basic level of English and getting an employment. And that is our goal. That's the focus that came from the group that led us, that, that met with us today. Mm -hmm. The second thing that they raised was just that employment. And um, I encourage them, we're doing these hiring halls because we witnessed black unemployment drop 24% since I've, since I've been mayor. Mm -hmm. And it's, it has been less than 8% for the first time, for the first time since 2019. So we have been, we have been holding these hiring halls where we're going into the community, showing people what jobs are available instead of asking them to try to navigate the bureaucracy of employment and so mm -hmm. I, I told when it was raised today in the meeting that there's a need for employment. I told the leaders that it's, they don't have to hold, they don't have to just attend one of the hiring halls we're doing, but we should have a hiring hall specifically for the Haitian community. We have fourteen thousand jobs that's are open, mm -hmm. fourteen thousand jobs, and we have partnered with the with the business communities that they're listing all the jobs that they have available. And so we can get people working because that's the, that's the really the first step uh, to really uh, enjoying not only the popularity, but the prosperity of the city. So mm -hmm. those are the list of items that we received from the Haitian leaders, everything um, from the churches who were there. Uh, they wanted to zero in on housing. We have what we call the city of yes proposal that's mm -hmm. going to allow our churches to build using their air rights to build on their footprint and really encourage them uh, to do uh, more building. Many of them wanted to do senior housing because you know the, the, the first right. large arrival of Haitians started in the 60s. Many of them are older now, mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about many years later, and they need a, a, a stable, safe environment with senior housing. And that's some of the things that we're encouraged to do. I know I said a lot, but- um, No. <laughs> No, it sounds all very commendable. You know, I applaud those efforts. I know, though, that government takes a while to to move, right? Mm -hmm. And so at the moment right now, a lot of the burden is on the community-based organizations who are dealing with 
people showing up at their doors, you know, sleeping there in the mornings waiting for them to open up. You know, I've heard stories about um, folks trying to do like intake 200 people a day, you know, to try to give them access to language services or help them find housing. And one of the things that I've heard folks complain about the most is that because Haitians have um, families here already, when they come in, a lot of them who go to the shelter end up calling family members and the relatives, you know, put them up on their couches, closet space, what have you, because no one wants anybody sleeping on the sidewalks, right? But um, that becomes an additional burden for those families, right? And for the CBOs that the families then say, okay, go here on Nostrand Avenue, go here on Brooklyn Avenue to try to get support because I have to get to work, right? So how is the city prepared to help those organizations who have to deal with the influx, right, right now, before a lot of these government programs that you mentioned can be um, put in place? Is there anything that you're looking yes. at? And, we're, and, we're, and, and you're right, the, the name of the game is that we can't say, well, you know, these programs are coming, which would mm -hmm. be six months, a year, or in some cases when the housing is built, you know, it mm -hmm. could be even potentially longer. There, there's a need right now. Right now. What we want to do is show people the first order of business is to see what resources are accessible that we're not taking advantage of. Mm -hmm. Because we send billions of dollars back to Washington and in the state based on services that are available that people are not using. Mm -hmm. people, are, people who are a long-term residents documented, they're accessible for, for, for uh, SNAP benefits. They're sex, mm -hmm. accessible for WIC. Uh, they're accessible for uh, free uh, health care or reduced health care. Uh, they're accessible for reduced fare metro cards. Uh, we just did an earned income tax credit increase that uh, many people are accessible. They need to be aware of it. We decreased, oh, okay. the, we decreased the cost of childcare for low income mm -hmm. and moderate income New Yorkers from $55 a week to less than $5 a week. So the most important thing is those who are helping family members, they need to be aware of what resources they are that are available for them because mm -hmm. far too often people don't know that there are a lot of things that are available for them that, and we want to show them how to apply for them at our mm -hmm. resource fairs. Yeah. So Jose, heads up, I'll be reaching out to you for the <laughs> hey, will be here. For those specifics, um, because I think that's a real need people need to be aware of right away to get some relief, you yes. know? Yes. So yes. thanks for um uh, for bringing that up. Know that last year, actually around this time of last summer, um, you had or the city had allocated some, you know, 1.2 or 1.5 million dollars to some very specific Haitian organizations last year. Right? Is that something that you're planning to do again? I know um, uh, the budget director spoke on Tuesday about, um, you know, how the city, the the having sixty five thousand or sixty four thousand migrants in your care, right? Yes. And um, it was very commendable how he walked through being able to um, manage the budget without raising taxes or <laughs> cutting services. So is there but unfortunately, I couldn't get a breakdown of um, money earmarked specifically for Haitian organizations. Is that something that's in the works that I'm just not able to see yet that yeah. you know of? Or where does that stand? Yeah. And, 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 and you know, sister, here's what the number one problem that we're facing with not only in the Haitian community, but throughout mm -hmm. the city. Um, the widespread of nonprofits. Mm -hmm. We have to use the word consolidation. Mm. We can't. We can't continue because of the limited amount of funds. They can't. They can't be on one block. Five nonprofits for financial literacy. Five nonprofits for anti-violence. Five nonprofits for uh, domestic violence. Everybody can't have a nonprofit. I know it's hard for people to accept that. They think their nonprofit profit is the best. It will solve uh, every problem we are facing. And only mm -hmm. there's no. It's time for us. We have uh, we have identified uh, uh, over 1,100 nonprofits for immigrant 
organization. Now, mm -hmm. there is a need. I don't take away from the fact that there's not a need, but we have to do an analysis and say, if we combine, mm -hmm. can our dollars go better instead of taking that piece of the pie and try to break it up into small crumbs? Mm -hmm. We have to really figure out, look at all of these immigrant locate organizations and say, okay, how many of them are dealing with Haitian issues? Some are dealing with Ecuadorian, Mexico, uh, and other yeah. issues, and we need to put them together, but we need to do a real analysis. How many nonprofits do we have that's dealing specifically with Haitian issues? And see from that, where mm -hmm. the duplication of services, where can we come together, and how we can better maximize our dollars because if you do $1.5 million that we saw, but mm -hmm. you have so many organizations that you have to break it up to, it does not fit the need. But if mm -hmm. you can consolidate and be laser focused on the money, it will go a long way. And we're looking to re repeat that. It's in the budget, it's part of the budget nego negotiation conversations. Mm -hmm. But one thing you should do is reach out to your Haitian electics, uh, like uh, uh, Councilwoman um, J um, Rita Joseph, mm -hmm. uh, Councilwoman uh, 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 Lewis, uh, Assemblywoman uh, Be Shot. Mm -hmm. you know, so there's some very powerful Haitian electeds that's in the city and state, and they should be part of the conversation with their discretionary dollars are you targeting Haitian groups and organizations? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad you brought that up, the consolidation, because we've been talking just overall in this community, not just in New York City, about the need to really form institutions, right, in our community at this point in time. We've been here for 50, 60 years, like you said, and you're right. There should have been a spokesperson organization that was on the ground at the White House, you know, saying, hey, are you seeing what's happening with Haiti and raising our voices? It didn't have to be, like you said, as, as muted as it was, um, that there weren't as many voices for Haiti. So having that level of specificity or specialization, I should say, is where I think a lot of the conversation is going now. So I'm glad that, you know, your administration is on board with encouraging that type of approach in terms of consolidation. So and, it, and it's so it's so important. Like how, how could we have engaged in a conversation about um relief and Haiti was not included in the group? You know, we have we have a larger Haitian population uh than what you have, for example, um in Ukraine. The, the population mm -hmm. here is larger. And, and it's important to assist Ukraine during the, the war, but it's important to assist Haiti as well. And that is what, you know, we if we gave billions of dollars, we could not find a hundred million dollars to say, let's help stabilize Haiti. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, you make a fair point <laughs> preaching to the choir here in yeah. many ways. So no, I'm glad that's where um, your your administration stands in that. And I will be following up following up as well with the specifics that were in that letter to the White House that was delivered after um, the the press conference that you all had with Reverend Sharpton a couple of weeks ago. So um, switching and, and, gears. And you, and, and you should reach out to every, number one, the New York delegation and everyone who stood up and advocated for uh, funds to go to the other other areas. And mm -hmm. say, listen, we need that level of energy and advocacy mm -hmm. of to you know to advocate for for Haiti. It, 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 it was another line in the budget. Mm -hmm. They already would. They were already allocating billions of dollars. You know. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, right? Because you do have you're in touch with other communities um, all the time, everywhere, right? What is it that um, that that works for those communities to get like Ukraine that. into the conversation, right? Because we hear so much, ah, Haiti isn't a strategic um, uh, country, like geopolitically, it doesn't bring much to the table. And that's why we have to prioritize, you know, Israel, Ukraine, and all these other countries. So, you know, one, you can comment on, on that um, thinking, right? But two, how then can Haitian Americans, the diaspora, people in the city here, you know, 
What do you think we can do that you've seen work for other diaspora communities? I, I love that. That is such a powerful question. Um, and the, the number one issue is stop fighting, finding reasons <laughs> to hate each other. Yeah. You know, stop fighting, finding reasons to hate each other. You don't have to be perfect. And mm -hmm. you have the right to the debate. My brothers, and, my, my brothers and sisters from my uh, family, we debate all the time, but we're still a family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the people always think they look for perfection and they need to stop. We need to fully understand that Haiti is still catching hell from beating the French with Tucson. Mm -hmm. You know, and we need to really come to a reckoning and say, OK, we, we I'm not inviting you to my barbecue. I'm not going to invite you uh, to my wedding. But you know what? There's some general things that we need. And let's speak in a unified voice. Let's look at five items that mm -hmm. we can agree on. Five to ten items. And then we can debate everything else. We All that's good. But mm -hmm. here are ten items that here is ten items that's important to the Haitian people. Laser focus. Mm -hmm. And deliver those items to the speaker, to the city council. Deliver those items to the state senate, assembly, and deliver them to Washington. Mm -hmm. you, know, you come up with that unified list. So no matter what the organization is, what the entity is, I don't like this one, I don't like that one, but fine. But we got a common denominator. We do like this. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. we believe we need to deal with senior, and I'm just saying, for example, we need to deal with senior housing. We need to have X amount of dollars for Haiti. And you got to come up with the number. You don't, We mm -hmm. don't want to say that um, we need money for Haiti. No, we need $500 million for Haiti. Yes. Everyone is clear on what the 10 items are. We need mm -hmm. language access, and here is how we want to do it. So when you do that, now you're focused mm -hmm. on what the agenda is. Because right now, if you were go and ask, if you were to go and ask the Jewish community what their agenda is, trust me, they're very clear on it. We mm -hmm. need this amount of money for Israel. If you were to go to Ukrainian, the same thing. If you go to the Haitian community, people are not clear on what's needed. And when you're inundated, when you're inundated with so many asks, you don't have time to try to figure out the needs of another entity. Wow. Thank you so much for that. I think now you're speaking our language at the <laughs> Haitian Times because we've been saying that for for a while, like what is our priority? What's our agenda as a community? So I will be using this clip over and over again a few <laughs> times, I'll say. Um, so I know we have to run, we don't have much time, but yes. I did wanna get your your comments um, on a developing story that speaks to this, you know, Haitians fighting each other, um, all of that, right? And that's the whole parade story. And mm -hmm. I only bring that up because you and your office were so instrumental in actually helping the Haitian Heritage Parade take place last month, uh, last year, sorry, um, in Manhattan after meeting with this group since 2017, 2018. Right. So, you know, I'm just curious to know your thoughts on where it's ending now, like in court, because the collaborators can't seem to um, agree on, on a permit issue. And it breaks my heart, you know, because for years the Haitian community was telling me they wanted a parade in Manhattan uh, like other uh, groups. And I, I promised, that was on my promise list. I said, when I become the mayor, uh, I'm going to make sure that you are, because being mayor is not only substantive, it's not only building housing, educating children, keeping our city mm -hmm. safe, but being a mayor is also uh, um, symbolic, symbolic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to say that the Haitian community, community could not march in Manhattan, we dismantled that. And now we're imploding, we're, in, we're imploding. And, you know, that just breaks my heart, you know, that the the vestiges of, you know, of slavery is just really keeping us from being together. And we need to put all that to the side. And the way to do it, it's just alternate. Like my Hasidic uh, constituents, uh, they fight over a space there's two husband, uh, two brothers that are mm -hmm. divided after the dad died, and they fight on being able to hold their um, 
celebration of thousands of people in one of the big armories. They fight over it. And so what was done is that you alternate the years. One year, one group is able to get it. Another year, another group is able to get it. And we could do the same here. If there's a dispute on two groups, okay, you do it here in 24, somebody else does it in 20, the next group does it in 25, 26, and 27, et cetera. And then there would come a time where they would say, okay, why do we have to, have to do it in alternate years? Why don't we just do it together? But in the interim, the need of the parade should not stop because right. we're having internal family conflicts. Mm -hmm. And I would love to sit down and have a conversation and see how I can help. Because as you indicated, I fought hard to get Haitians mm -hmm. on uh, the parade route in Manhattan. And I would hate to lose that. Okay. There is such a thing um, as, because I've heard things like, well, instead of you know, dealing with individuals, right? Why don't we set up, like you said, consolidation, you know, one organization that deals with parades, events, and, and you know, cultural things only, for example, right? right? So I think that's just another example of the need to really consolidate our efforts and activities so we could be more efficient yep. and more focused, like you said. So okay. the one thing I did want to touch on with you, if you have a few more yes. minutes, mm -hmm. is um this election coming up. I know it seems far away from people, and I may not use this until later in the summer, but the way we're looking at it, the presidential elections this year are so consequential for Haiti because of what you said in the beginning, so, you know, kicking things off with Haiti and what's happening with Haiti right now. And so I'm looking at how and because of this um, immigration debate, you know, asylum seeker crisis has become such a, a hot button politically for people who have been very divisive, right? And I feel like, oh, I've seen people falling into the misinformation. So I'm really curious and wondering, you know, what can the administration do because you are so civic minded and you're so engaged with the community to just start maybe pushing that conversation so people understand, you know, what's at stake here for us as a community. And I know it's not your role, you're very <laughs> busy, but because you they listen to you, right? They they support you. You know, what can what can the city offer in terms of getting this community to the place where it's ready to make a, a decision and you know to vote and be um you know, excited and engaged with the upcoming elections this year and obviously future elections in, in the midterm? Well, self-preservation is at the heart of who we are as the human experience. We in the Democratic Party and mm -hmm. the president's team, they must have a clear message on uh, why it is important uh, to vote for the president. It has to be clear. It cannot be mm -hmm. esoteric. It cannot be, of uh, you know, because uh, America would move in the right direction. All that good stuff is fine. People are saying, how is this election is going to impact my day-to-day -day life? And we need real examples of that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. if, we don't, if we don't do A, uh, we're going to get B. And that lack of clarity uh, could hurt the turnout. Because people may not mm -hmm. vote Republican, but they may stay home. And that is a no yes. vote at the same time. Particularly when you look at the large population of Haitians in Florida. Florida mm -hmm. is a key state, a key, a, a key location. And right here in New York, you know, we can't take anything for granted of, of what's happening in New York. And so I, I as I stated, although um, we want a president that's going to take care of the entire country, but every organization, every entity and part of this country, they have unique things that impact them directly. We need to identify them, have real uh, credible messengers and uh, those who can communicate on the ground to articulate those issues uh, that are important. So people will be motivated to go come out to vote and they'll know why they're coming out to vote. Mm 